For this Star Phantom Marine, I started by applying an even base coat of Scale 75 Bearing Blue over White Primer. I used Bearing Blue here as I really like how it looks as the shadows for white paint schemes, and as I gradually layer up my white paint next, I should be able to build up some really nice gradients from this gray blue to pure white. I next layer on three to four coats of Media Calm Art Opaque White. Despite its name, this white's actually fairly transparent when applied through an airbrush and is great for building up smooth transitions. For each layer, I try to target a smaller area than the last and use it to build up my highlights until I eventually get to a pure white at the highest points of the model. It's a little difficult to show on video how well this paint can be used to build up these smooth transitions and highlights, but this paint works in a way that I haven't seen many other paints work through an airbrush, and I highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in trying to do a white ski. I also make sure here to leave some of the blue showing on vertical stripes in the legs to represent light reflecting off the cylindrical shapes of the leg armor plates. Next, I apply a layer of gloss varnish over the entire model and then apply a couple of decals from Chapter Customizer onto the shoulder pads. It might sound fairly obvious, but one of the best ways to elevate your model's appearance is to provide clear visual separation between different armor panels on the model. And to do this, I generally turn to things such as oil or enamel washes, as I find they are far easier to use and quicker than try doing something like panel lining with Games Workshop washes or the like. For this model, I decided to use Streaking Grime, which is a reddish brown color that gives a very nice and dirty appearance to models. You can absolutely use something like black oil here though if you want a cleaner appearance to your Star Phantom. This streaking grime was applied fairly liberally over the entire model and left to dry. After the streaking grime had fully dried, which you can tell it has a matte finish as opposed to a glossy or wet one, I used a makeup remover to gently remove away a lot of the streaking grime on the model. At first though, this wasn't removing enough of the streaking grime as it was leaving behind a very muddy appearance over the entire model, which I was not looking for, as I wanted to only leave this in the recesses of the Marine's armor. So I dipped my makeup remover into a little bit of white spirits and used that to gently wipe away all of the enamel on the flat parts of the armor. Eventually I was left with the enamel only in the deepest recesses and the rest of the armor being the bright white that I painted on before. Once I'm happy with the streaking grime removal, I spray the entire model with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish to kill all of the shine of the gloss varnish from previous steps. Next I use sponge chipping to better define the edges of the armor and for this model, I use Petroleum Gray by Scale 75. If you've seen my other videos, you know I'm a huge fan of sponge chipping as opposed to edge highlighting for armor plate definition. But if you're new here, well one, welcome to my videos with my first introduction at like three minutes in. But two, I prefer sponge chipping over edge highlighting to define the edges of my model's armor plates as I find it easier, less tedious, and looks more realistic than straight edge highlighting line seals, Young Games Workshop miniatures. I also do some additional sponge chipping with white here to add further texture to the model and add some color variation to the edges of the model's armor. Finally, I finish up the weathering step by painting small lines across the Marine's armor to represent scratches and abrasions that he might have received from running into various objects in his environment. The rest of the model is painted pretty simply, with metallic areas being painted first with heavy metal, then washed with non oil. The eyes were painted in a pretty standard red eye lens color scheme, where I start off with black and then paint progressively smaller layers of deep red, Antares red, and Mars orange. And the bolter's casing was painted first with a layer of flat black and then a rough edge highlight of graphite. So there you have it. A pretty simple way to get a nice white color scheme with little fuss. If you found this tutorial helpful, I have a ton more on my channel too that I think you'll find interesting. I put a new one out every week. So make sure to subscribe to see the newest ones as they come out delivered straight to your YouTube homepage. Thanks for watching and hobby on.